not breathe. <laughs> With this mask, I, I can't breathe. But anyways, I want to say thank you to everyone that is here this morning, especially thankful for the ones who um, have been encouraging me. I got a, a text message to, this morning, and it was very encouraging um, to me when, you know, my brothers and sisters um, encourage me to stand up like we do every, everyone who stands before me. Um, so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for Andy making a safe trip and then for Rory being here. We're appreciative of, of our visitors. We are thankful for that. Um, just a little bit of um, information. Um, Acts, we just got done study in Acts chapters 1 through 14 from the West Virginia School of Preaching. And when I heard this in Acts chapter 8, I said, oh, this is going to be a good sermon. This will be a good sermon. And my title is Simon the Sorcerer. And I'm thankful for uh, Charles for reading that lengthy uh, scripture reading in Acts chapter 8 verses 9 through 12. I do appreciate that. It's very encouraging for me, when I'm hearing that, it get for me, it gets me, you know, in that mindset. I get in that mindset. Um, so Simon the Sorcerer. In cases of conversion in the New Testament, often we get the we get the attention of all the conversions, but some of the conversions of Simon the sorcerer is ne neglected. We don't hear a lot of conversions or, or a lot of talk about Simon the sorcerer, in which I thought was, oh man, this, this would be a good one because we, we, we don't hear that much of Simon the sorcerer. When it is discussed, discussed, it is not understood. It's not understood. There's always a wrong conclusion because some people they start off and they read Simon the Sorcerer and they say, oh man, this is a bad guy. You know, but in this lesson, we, we will focus on the four phases of the biblical record to help us understand the facts God has presented before us. Simon's pre-conversion for us. Simon's pre-conversion for us. His conversion, his sin and condition following his conversion, and then his re rest restore restoration, his restoration. Sometimes I can't even read my own writing. I'm trying to go so fast. I need to learn to slow down. Simon's pre-conversion condition. He was a sorcerer. Sorcery is defined the use of power gained from assistance or control of evil spirits. We see that that always happened, or that happened in those times. Seems to be a, a com seemed to be common at the time and profitable. If we turn over to Acts chapter 8, verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. Now if we flip over a couple um, chapters to Acts chapter 13 and verse 6. Now, when they had gone through the island of, of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus. Now, if we flip over a couple more chapters to Acts chapter 6 and verse 16, now it happened when he went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with, with a spirit of divinity met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. Now let's flip over to a few more chapters, to Acts chapter 19 and verse 19. 
In Acts chapter 19, verse 19, also many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it total, totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. We can see in Acts chapter 8, verse 9, it was a bewitching power. It was a bewitching power. Now we're going to flip over to the Old Testament. We're going to go over to the Old Testament. And it was condemned by the Old Testament. It was condemned by the Old Testament. In Levit Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 6 reads, And the person who turns to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from his people. And now if we turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 7 and 8. 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 7 and 8. Then Saul said to his servants, Find me a woman who is a medium, and, and that I may go to her and inquire of her, and his servant said to him, In fact, there is a woman who is a medium in Endor. So Saul discussed himself with, with the, discussed himself and put on other clothes, and he went, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, Please conduct a seance for me, and bring up for me the one. I shall call to you. A proud person proclaiming his own greatness. We can see that in Acts chapter 8 and verse 9. He was a proud person. Released and revealed in esteem and acclaimed, given him by the people. Now if we look over at Acts chapter 8 verses, uh, verses 10 and 11, to whom they all gave heed that the least to the greatest, saying, this man of great power, this man of great power of God. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. An unsavory character unworthy of the respect he received, one in need of salvation, and one for whom Jesus died. Let's turn over to Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9 reads, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of, of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might take, taste death for everyone. Now, let's take a look over at his conversion. Let's take a look at his conversion. He was converted exactly as others were converted since Pentecost. It's a simple process. God has only one plan. He heard Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ believed and was baptized. And we can see this in Acts chapter 8, verses 5, 12, and 13. According to the promise of Jesus in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, Simon was saved. He continued with Philip and filled with wonderment at the miracles he saw. Note, he didn't see Philip bestow miracle working power on others because Philip did not have that power. The apostles who came from Jerusalem did. Acts chapter 8, verse 18. Acts chapter 8, verse 15 reads. And when Simon saw that through the laying on the apostles' hands 
the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. His sin and conditions following his conversion. Conversion does not destroy one's desires. It, it is possible for one to slip back into the former ways of life. Now think about that for a minute. Let's think about that for a minute. It is possible for one to slip back into the former ways of life. What does that mean? That means once we are, we hear, believe, repent, and be baptized, we can be baptized for our sins, we're saved. We are saved. We are saved according to God. But man has free will. He could slip back to his former ways. He could slip back and sin, and as he does that, he fallen away from the Lord. Now let's take a look over at 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20 reads, For if after they have escaped the, pollution, the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are, are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. We must guard against this. We must guard against this. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 reads, but I but discipline my body and bring it to subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from freshly, fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. We can see here, Simon slipped back into his former life, his sin, wanting to be the great one again and receive the acceptance of men. Also to make money to be bestowing the Holy Spirit by the laying on of his, his hands. Simon wanted this power. Simon wanted to be able to give it the Holy Spirit to anyone that he wanted to for money, for gain. I know it's true because his heart was not right. His heart was not right. Acts 8.21 He is perishing. We can see that in Acts chapter 8 and verse 20. He is in the gall of bitterness. Acts chapter 8 verse 23. He is in the bond of iniquity in Acts chapter 8 verse 23. He is wicked. He is wicked. Acts chapter 8 verse 22. Yes, Christians can and do fall and they need restored. Let's consider a couple verses. Let's consider a couple of these verses. Let's start off with Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. Brethren, if a man is overtaken by any trespass, you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. We are told to restore such a one. 
We're told to restore such one. Let's take it. Let's take and consider James chapter five, verses nineteen and twenty. Now let's listen to these words. James chapter five, verses nineteen and twenty. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the heirs of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Let's consider that. Let's think about that for, for a while. If anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the heirs of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. I don't know about you, but I think about that all the time. If I could just save one precious soul from death. We're told what's going to happen when we pass from this earth. I'll be honest. I don't want to go there. I do not want to go there fire and brimstone what a death you'll be in pain forever but we do have a hope we do have a hope now let's look at the conclusion of the story his restoration his restoration God has made provision for his children when they say when they sin yes he did God made provisions for his children when they sin. Simon was told by the inspired apostle what he must do. Repent. Acts chapter 8 verse 22. 2nd Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 to be sorry and turn from your sins. Now here's something to consider. In Acts chapter 8, verse 22, it says, pray for forgiveness. I would like to read that. Acts chapter 8, verse 22. Repent, therefore, of this, your wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. Simon confessed. Simon did confess his guilt of sin when he asked Peter, pray ye to the Lord for, for me. And that's in Acts chapter 8 and verse 24. Simon asked Peter to pray for him. Pray for me. He made a con confession. He made a requirement. He confessed his sins. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. Let's take a look at 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All we have to do is pray, confess our sins. We have to confess our sins. Who do we confess our sins to? God. You don't need to confess your sins to me or anyone else. You need to do it to God. You have to tell God your sins, what you did wrong. He knows what you did wrong but confess them. We need to confess our sins to God. Conclusion. In this case of Simon the sorcerer, God's plan for salvation of the alien sinner and the child of God is seen. One of them is for you. My question to you is will you obey? Will you obey? The invitation is yours. We are told to, we are commanded to hear, 
Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So then, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Believe. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We need to repent. Luke chapter 3 and verse 13. Or verse 3. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. We need to confess. Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. For with the heart one believes unto unrighteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Be baptized. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And then we need to remain faithful. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Do not fear any of these things, which you, have, which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, but you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. The invitation is yours. We are recording this. I will say, I will say this for everyone that is here. The invitation is yours. And if you are watching this, please get a hold of one of the churches of Christ in your area. Or you can call us. Someone will be glad to help you in any way we can. And with anything that we can do for you, we're here for you as we stand and sing.